too Jeff much. Jeff Taylor, every time life. you come to the program, I'm always well fed. The last time we had this beef burger. Yeah, the Goliath, yeah. Goliath, oh my gosh. Oh. Andy, you missed out. Oh. It was so, <laughs> I mean, we have to do that again. We have to do that again. We definitely have to. So tell me now, what's, what's going on here? I know you're making an orange chicken salad. Uh -huh. So tell me more about what's going on right now. So right now, I'm, I'm pretty much grilling my chicken breast. Okay. Chicken breast, of course, is healthy. We all know that already. Yes. So like I said earlier, I'm mixing my special sauce okay. and just, you know, grilling this quickly. Then you, what you just have to do once you're done with this is just to put everything together with the oranges and apple already grilled earlier, mm -hmm. with the latest curry cucumbers and a bit of a simple vinaigrette. Just put olive oil and a bit of spices and, and it'll so be ready. Yeah, it's okay, ready. so you grilled your your fruit. Yeah, yeah I, I grilled the oranges. I grilled apple. Yeah. Interesting. Like yeah. this is the first time I'm saying that. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Did you add some spices to it? Nah. No. Okay. Nah. Just the way you it just is. Keep it How do you grill fruits? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so many questions. Like, what difference does it actually make yeah. to the meal? Um, <laughs> so with the taste, sort of, uh, it has this etsy, fiery, smoky feel to it. So it just makes it more interesting, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yummy. So, so when is this going to be ready? Um, <laughs> in no time, actually. <laughs> I don't want you to just cook up properly. Okay. Then probably I would still serve you, or you okay. could probably just help me steady so you can just. Okay, do yeah, sure. Listen, Andy, I'm sure you're All, 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 all <laughs> I'm saying is that you can't do this this way <laughs> and stop. We need to have this. Like, I actually had my bed, like I said earlier. We uh -huh. share the same bed, yeah. And yeah. You would always just steal away. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. You know what? <laughs> Next year we should have a combined party. Yes, I totally and agree. I think you should I'm be just the. I'm thinking about the food. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's like, like as long as there's gonna be food. There, like, we're good. <laughs> I hope I'm doing this properly. Yeah, doing it properly. Okay. It looks really okay. nice. Yeah, it tastes better. Oh actually. my god, it's I can't wait to taste right. it. This yeah. secret sauce. Are you sure you don't want to share? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm not ready to drink. I need to go to the colony on Monday. I've been there once. Yes, you have. You have to come to the colony. Your restaurant. Okay, please tell our viewers where it is. Um, so the colony is at 24 Bujumbura Street, um, off Amino Kano Crescent and Musetu. Okay. Yes. So you have fusion food and a lot of all of these great tours food and more at the colony yeah. actually awesome well i can't wait to taste it we'll take a short break right now when we return more on the weekend show and i'm sure this food will be ready in no time we'll taste it for you and let <laughs> let you know how amazing it is let's take a short break we'll be right back on the weekend show to you abuja welcome to the sports segment of the weekend show my name is Odiri Akwan. Um, this morning, of course, we'll start with, with our usual inspirational quotes from legendary American gymnast Gabby Douglas. And this morning she says, gold medals are made out of sweat, blood, and tears, and efforts in the gym every day. You want to find out why we don't pick medals at the Olympics? Maybe we should follow this advice and we can begin to you know, register our participation at the Olympics with medals. Right now, I'm not alone on the show this morning. I've got Ikedi with me. Good morning, Nikedi. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Ode. Okay, so we're going to start off with a simple one. This week, the Confederation of African Football President, Ahmad Amad, came out to admit that the, the continental body actually sought the assistance of FIFA um, in, of course, running the affairs of African football. He said it was important because um, there were challenges facing African football and they needed the help. He made this um, admission when, of course, they were inaugurating the CAF FIFA Reforms Tax Force. And so we hope that um, the fact tax force will be looking at revenue generation for African football, also football safety and security and every other thing that is relating to football that is in dire need of help from FIFA. So let's go straight to the Super Eagles. They had a friendly match against Ukraine. It ended 2-2. Of course, there was a tale of maybe an hour and the second half. <laughs> it depends. Now, the first one hour was really good for the Super Eagles. The first half was excellent. We saw a goal in three minutes. Uh, Joe Arriba scoring for us in that game. And uh, But what I want to talk about first of all, though, has to be to do with Samuel Kalu. Inspirational play from him. Mm -hmm. It's sad for me because it was a friendly game. Now, I would have loved to see that in the game against Algeria. Okay. At the Nations Cup. And I'm sure we'll have been in the finals. Yeah, you're right, but you know, during the Nations Cup, or just before the Nations Cup, he fainted uh, from dehydration. Yep. And I think that affected his play. Uh, so the friendlies, he was brilliant um, that day. He terrorized um, Kolovayev, the, um, the Ukrainian right back. Mm. The guy suffered from what he could do, you know. So, yeah, I think he's coming up and he was going you to... You know, for a long time, we felt Alex Iwobi was a skillful guy. Mm. But with this display from Carlo, mm. I, I'm changing my mind now. I think we have we have a lot of things from the wings, you know. Um, we Samuel Carlo on one wing, and then um, 
with Samuel Chukwese on the other wing. We have good wing players now, and we can do a lot of things from their wings. For this okay, moment. also someone to talk about in that game, Joe Aribo. Mm. Now, first game, um, debut goal for yeah. the Super Eagles. Um, does that mean Paul Onochu and the rest will have to fight harder to get um, the top nine position in the Super Eagles? No, Joe Aribo play from the midfield, and then he's been very good for Rangers this season. You know, um, so it's more like a Frank Lampard role. That, that guy who sits from the midfield comes in to assist with goals and other things. Exactly, the boss to boss kind of thing. And he, he was brilliant. You could see from uh, the run he made to score that goal from that defensive midfield position. Mm. He is brilliant. And I, I see um, a lot of him in the spikes. And we could start now and start forgetting about Mika because with what I saw, if he continues with that, we're going to have good so impact from him. Yeah. We already have a replacement. For Mikel. What I saw in that game, if mm. he continues with that, then I think we should forget about Mikel. Okay, then the, the Super Eagles almost set. Because um, also Victor Osimhen looked really good. Yeah, looked like a good he replacement for He was able to, you know, Dalot. hold up, play, do the job that a top nine, you expect of a top top nine. Uh, Our worry was always, we've tried to do that with Kelechi in Ihenacho mm. when, when Igalo was not around and it didn't work. It, it totally backfired for us. But exactly. Osimhen seems to get the grasp of what we need him to do. Exactly. Very hard working. Holding up play was very brilliant. And I, you could see him making good runs. He's fast. He's going to occupy defenders anytime, any day. Good, good, perfect replacement for, for uh, Odeon Igalo. We were worried about when Odeon said he was retiring. Yeah. You know, but look at Osimhen coming in to do a brilliant job. And we see also have players coming after him. Paul Anacho, we didn't see him in that match. But what we saw Vito D, uh, do in that match, really, and what he's doing with his club, I think we'll have a good replacement for Odion and Gallo. And okay. this Pai goes attack is looking really bright. The okay. attack is not my worry, really. That the defence has to be the worry. We'll get to the defence in a bit. Let's just talk about Samuel Chukweze, mm. um, the Villarreal winger. Um, good, good play from him. But a lot of us had to worry about his decision making in the final third. Exactly. His final, his final balls, he, <laughs> when he's supposed to pass the ball, he's shooting. He has chances to um, lay off passes for um, Samuel Carlo or for Shimen, you know. But he's taking um, responsibility and taking the shots. Yeah, I want to see him take responsibility, but I want to also see him make right decisions, pass the ball. Response, if you want to take responsibility, mm. that should also involve you being able to share. You, you need to be able to assist. When you, there's a free, uh, there's someone free in the box, you have to give the ball. Yeah, right. When somebody is better placed, give him the ball to score. Because at the end of the day, we want to see good team play and they want to see... It's a general a result win. for everybody. A win for Nigeria, right? So, and, and we don't want, we want to avoid what, is, uh, what happened with Salah and Mane in the Liverpool uh, team. We want to see him square balls, you know. Give other players to score. When you, because he had chances. He could have squared those balls. Let's to take a look at this one. Um, Sam Ochikweze um, having a chance is on the edge, and then he doesn't pass. Exactly. There's, there's, there was even. You see, look, you at, see? look at that. There were players in the balls. Two, you know, two the players ball. in the balls. And look, this is another one too. He could have, he could have squared that. See, yes. there are, he had chances, yeah. you know, to square, and a lot of the good chances. We you have know. gone back. That angle was pretty tight. Tight. You can't score from there. The goalkeeper has covered that. Yeah. There was a shimmer on the other right, on the mm -hmm. other angle of the distance. And he could have just given the ball to score. And that would have been third goal at that point. It would have been yeah. three goals up Nigeria. And then I think that at that point, that would have been game over. Well, game over to uh, totally, of course. But I'm definitely impressed with all that. But let's talk about the defence. And um, we know it's a, it's a friendly game. But the defence, we considered two goals in the last 20 minutes of the game. It's less than 20 minutes. I think 12 minutes or so of the yeah. game because the first goal came in the 78th minute minutes. of the game yeah. so um it's a problem we've had even at the nation's cup we had it i'm still worried about the defense of the super eagles can we find a solution before we have serious qualifiers and serious games to play i think the defense looked good my concern was not the defense my concern was the lack of concentration in the same yeah. you know towards the end i think uh will i blame the coach now because we were without we friend did, did that show he didn't exactly show Etebo was brilliant. Mm. Juaribo was brilliant. I, I, I saw Etebo step in to harass the players. You know, yeah. he knew when to uh, press. Mm. When he thinks they can win the ball, he knew. So I uh, wouldn't really miss Etebo, really. I think uh, what we Indidi, you mean? Uh, Indidi, rather. But I think what we missed in that thing was uh, towards the dying minutes of the match, the coach should have refreshed the team. The players were tired. We could see they were physically and mentally tired at some point. Maybe they felt they had won the match, you know, and probably they didn't do what they needed to do. Okay, away from the Super Eagles. Also, just before we leave there, Gennett Raw, that Super Eagles technical advisor, lost his mother during the week. She was 97, Elizabeth Raw, and she died uh, some days uh, after uh, the international friendly with Ukraine. So uh, we commiserate with the Super Eagles coach and hope that he has the fortitude uh, to be at this particular loss. 
Okay, we'll move on straight from there to the goals of the week. Yes, there were goals. There were European qualifiers. There were African um, international, well, African qualifiers, also international friendly matches. Let's take a look. Gadesh, lovely work. Gadesh! And on his left foot, back across the cover. That's the moment where he just opened from Gadesh. Oh, that's given away by Keane, and here's a chance inside 30 seconds. Which... Oh, brilliant trickery, and he still has it. It won't be options in the middle, and they've turned it in. Brilliantly tucked home. Well, Joe Aribo's goal was a fantastic teamwork, okay? So it's uh, the hard work done by Carlo, complemented by, of course, Alex Iwobi, and then finished by Joe Aribo. Complete team goal in that one. But, of course, uh, let's go away from there to the fixtures. The, of course, club football resumes today, this weekend. We see fixtures from the uh, French League on Paris Saint-Germain. It's an action at 4.30 p.m. today against Strasbourg. We also see AS Monaco taking on Marseille. That is on Sunday. That's tomorrow. And Nantes will take on Rams and of course, those are the fixtures in the French League One. La Liga, uh, Real Madrid will be uh, in action early today. First um, kickoff today is at 12 noon. Real Madrid taking on Levante. And we see Barcelona in action um, later tonight at 8 p.m. against Valencia. And in, on Sunday, we see um, Betis. Real Betis taking on Hetafe at 8 p.m. Sevilla will be in action against Alaves away from home tomorrow at 1 in the afternoon. Also, away from the La Liga, we see in the Serie A. Um, uh, the Juventus should be busy today at 2 o'clock against Fiorentina. They are away from home. And so we should see um, Sari coming back into action after his um, time off with Nimonia. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first game for him. Yes. Uh, in his club, and uh, we see Napoli against Sampdoria, Inter Milan also against Udinese. You keep seeing that all the UEFA Champions League teams are playing today because they have to be ready for mid the midweek games. Yeah. Okay, so um, away from the Italian Serie A, let's go to um, the. Do we go to the English Premier League first, or where do we go to next? Bundesliga. Okay, yeah, you got it right, the Bundesliga. Okay, so. Uh, Union Berlin will be up against uh, Werder Bremen today at two thirty, mm -hmm. and we see Borussia Dortmund against Bayer Leverkusen. That will be coming up at 2.30 today. And um, Bayern Munich is in action at 5.30 away to RB Leipzig. And uh, tomorrow we see um, Hoffenheim up against SC Freiburg at 2.30. And at 5 p.m., SC Paderborn 07 takes on Schalke 04. So we will wrap up the fixtures with the um, English Premier League fixtures coming up at two, uh, 12 12.30. It will be Liverpool against Newcastle United. Now, Manchester United against Leicester City. That has to be a tough one for Manchester United. You were telling me earlier on that yeah. United was going to lose this game. They're playing yeah. at home. Yeah, I think they are going to lose. Um, we saw some once uh, Southampton did to them. Mm. You know, we also saw what Crystal Palace the, did to there, them. There's been like 10 days since uh, at least, or more than 10 days. And they had a lot of, a lot of injuries. Poba is not going to play in the match. Marshall is going to be missing. And there is no adequate replacement like we've always said about them. So I think um, Leicester, and Leicester started the season very well. Leicester is going to win. I think is, Leicester is, is going it, to is win. Is it that Christmas come, has come early for, play, um, for clubs going to play at Old Trafford? I think any team that, any team that want to play uh, Manche Manchester United now. Now. Yes, because they're going to always drop points. Okay, at 3 p.m. we also see Tottenham Hotspur taking on Crystal Palace, Wolverhampton Wanderers taking on Chelsea, Norwich City against Manchester City. Now, this Chelsea game is our match of the week, and we're looking at that because it's Nuno Espirito Sanchez against Frank Lampard. Lampard wet behind the ears when it comes to experience in the Premier League, but we know that Espirito Sanchez... Mm. Uh, he's not wetting it behind the ears. He is the man who was a stumbling block for the top six last season. Yeah. And this season, he seems to have picked up where he left off. Yes. And um, this doesn't look like a win-win situation for Chelsea. No. Um, our worry has always been Chelsea defence. Yeah. The attack good. Tammy is playing very well. Uh, Monty is also doing very well. But the defence is always the issue. And with the attack of Wolves, Diogo Jota and Raul Jimenez, they're going to give any team any trouble any day. <laughs> you know? So I, 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 see, I see trouble. For Chelsea in this match. Okay, if you look at the stats between these both um, these teams, you see that um, um, Chelsea has 28 wins, Wolves have 35 wins, um, 19 draws between the sides, and 28 losses, 
for uh, Wolves and 35 losses for Chelsea. So it, it looks like Wolves has been the better side yeah. overall in 82 games. They have so the, they have it the looks upper like hand. That, that tradition will yeah, definitely yeah, I continue. I think it's going to be 36 wins after, <laughs> after the match. So that tra tradition might continue, except Frank Lampard's players didn't really have a lot of international friendlies to play. Yeah. Did they? They, they, they so didn't. Maybe they, didn't. they worked hard on this game against Wolves. Maybe. We'll find out uh, during the game later on today. Right now, we're wrapping up with basketball, of course. Um, let's go straight to that. Yesterday, we had semi finals in the basketball Argentina against France and Spain against Australia. Now, um, Argentina will meet Spain in the final to be played tomorrow. Of course, the big story for this week in the basketball World Cup had to be um, the USA losing to France. And then in the classification uh, game, they also lost to Serbia. So um, wrapping up right here on the sports segment. Thank you so much, Ikedi, for joining me on the show. It's Thank been a pleasure. Very, thank you very much, Adiri. All right, we're going back to um, Osasu, Anthony Joshua. We also uh, meet with Andy. <laughs> Straight back here on the show. More coming your way, of course. Uh, and of course, don't forget, social media trends will also be up after this. But the chef seems to be ready with some bowls. Welcome back, Chef Taylor. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to dig into this. So for the viewers just joining us, just quickly run them through what this is, what the ingredients are inside, and what we should, Andy and I should be expecting, <laughs> tasting on you guys' behalf. <laughs> yes, so we have the grilled orange apple chicken salad. Okay. So pretty much you grill your oranges, grill your apples, grill your chicken breast, then you put it together with lettuce, carrot, cucumbers, and a simple vinaigrette. I use orange juice, olive oil, um, peppers and um, a little bit of dark stuff. So pretty much. So okay. expect to bust of flavor. Yeah, awesome. So <laughs> how long does this take to make on a regular? Um, standard 15 to 20 minutes. Even though I said today since I was <laughs> 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 It seemed like forever, yes, but yeah, it's 15 to 20 yeah, minutes. 15 so this is just a quick dish. So if Simple you're hungry, yeah. just quickly yeah. whip up these things, grill them exactly. and Perfect. Uh, yeah. So, can we taste that? You know that? what? <laughs> I really wish the viewers can actually perceive this through the screen. Like, it see does it. smell um, so much. Nice. So just stay like, like a, carrots, a quick um, stir Listen. together. Yeah. Chicken yeah, underneath. Yeah, so the chicken underneath to just put it all together and just ensure you get like a... Ah, okay, I think she's get, doing a better she's job. She's getting it right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. chef. To try with oranges, well. yeah. That's so yeah, really nice. yeah. So pretty much, of course, if you want for the viewers at home, you yeah, can we're gonna get this. Yeah, so you can come to the colony, um, the colony by Chef Taylor, um, twenty four mm -hmm. Bujumbura Street, off Amunukano Crescent. Or pre-order my book, Husband Materials, one hundred yards. Oh, one hundred. I love that. <laughs> material know how to cook yes yeah, so mm. 100 recipe are more on surviving bachelorhood and becoming the perfect husband so you can wow. pre-order my book or come to the restaurant so you mm. can get to experience this and more and we have proof yes yeah, yeah, we yeah have you have that this is good <laughs> yeah. thank you so much chef thank taylor so much. for coming on your thank social you. media handles um at the colony.ng at chef taylor underscore o at taylor underscore tower so T A Y L A W underscore T A M O D or Chef Taylor underscore. Perfect. We look forward to you coming back anytime, any day. Yes. Um, we'll eat your food for free. Always. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure yeah. for you, Annie. Yes. Yes. For you, yes. 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 Oh, thank you. Yes. That's yes. my right title. This is Anthony Joshua. He doesn't know he's married to me yet, but he'll soon find out. Oh. <laughs> thank, you so thank you so much. It's a so pleasure. Much. Thank, thank you. you. We'll take a short break right now when we return the entertainment segment of the weekend show. Don't go anywhere.